Hello everybody, this video is on introduction to spectroscopy. In Bohr's atomic model, electrons orbit a centrally positioned nucleus in circular orbits. And Bohr proposed that these orbits have different energy levels. The orbits that are closer to the nucleus have lower energy level, and the ones that get further out have a higher energy level. So the energy of the orbit increases with its distance away from the nucleus. Spectroscopy is the interaction between electromagnetic radiation and electrons in atoms, that is matter. Electrons can either absorb or emit energy in the form of EMR to transition between orbits of different energy levels. The ground state refers to the energy level that electrons are normally found in, and the excited state refers to the energy levels or orbits to which electrons can move up to when they absorb a particular amount of energy. So in the Bohr atomic model, electrons can transition between ground states and various excited states by absorbing or releasing energy. By way of review, electromagnetic waves are transverse waves that exist on a spectrum of various wavelengths and frequencies. Visible light is only a small part of the entire spectrum, whose wavelengths are visible to our eyes. The energy of an electromagnetic wave is proportional to its frequency. That means higher the frequency, higher the amount of energy that the wave contains. It is inversely proportional to the wavelength of the wave. So longer the wavelength, smaller the amount of energy. For example, on the visible light spectrum, a violet light, which has a shorter wavelength of roughly 400 nanometers, this will correspond to a higher energy compared to red light on the other side of the spectrum, which has a much longer wavelength of roughly 700 nanometers, this will have a lower amount of energy. Electrons can absorb a discrete or specific amount of energy to move to a higher orbit. This amount of energy is specific as it equals to the difference in energy between the orbits of different energy levels. So if an electron wants to go from the first orbit to the second orbit, the amount of energy that it must absorb must be equal to the energy between these two orbits. And likewise, if the electron wants to go to the third orbit instead, it needs to absorb a much greater amount of energy because the difference in the two energy levels is now greater compared to the previous transition. When the electrons move to a higher orbit, this process is known as excitations because the electrons are excited by absorbing this energy as they go from the ground state, that is the normal energy level, to a much higher excited state. Excited electrons do not stay in their excited energy levels forever. They will eventually return to the ground state by releasing energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation, EMR. The energy that they emit also equals to the difference in the two orbits energy levels. So if the electron is going from the third orbit, coming back down to its ground state in the first orbit, then the amount of EMI it produces will be equal to the difference in the energy levels of these two orbits. Now, by the law of conservation of energy, the amount of energy that's being absorbed during the excitation process should be equal to the amount of energy released during the process through which electrons return to the ground states. Since elements have different atomic structures, orbits have different energy levels amongst different elements. So element one and element two may both have two energy levels, but element one's energy levels for the two orbits can be smaller compared to those of element two. This means the amount of energy absorbed by the electrons during the excitation process would be different between the two elements. This will be also unique to the elements that the electrons are found in. We can use this information, that is the amount of energy that's being absorbed, to identify elements. There are three types of spectra you will come across in spectroscopy. Any type of electromagnetic radiation, whether it's visible light, radio waves or x-rays, are normally in the form of a continuous spectrum. For example, when a source of white light from a light bulb is passed through a glass prism, undergoing dispersion, a rainbow continuous spectrum of visible light will form. This spectrum will consist of all wavelengths 
in the visible light spectrum. When an element absorbs energy, such as heat, the electrons in the atoms of this element will undergo excitation and transition from its ground state to an excited state. Now remember, excited electrons will never stay in their excited states forever. When they return to the ground state, they will release energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. This energy released will be equal to the difference in energy levels of the orbits that the electrons are transitioning between. The spectrum of light that's been produced when the electrons return to the ground state will contain specific wavelengths of light because each wavelength of light contains a specific amount of energy that corresponds to the transitions that the electrons were making in this particular element. This spectrum is called an emission spectrum and it will be discontinuous because it will be mostly black. You will only see several thin emission lines throughout the spectrum. Each emission line corresponds to a specific electronic transition. Since electrons can return to the ground state from many different higher excited states, there will be several emission lines observed in this type of spectrum. When white light from the light bulb that we saw previously that produced the continuous spectrum is passed through the same element, but this time it's not heated, it will produce what we call an absorption spectrum. This is because the electrons in this particular element will absorb energy from the white light. And the amount of energy absorbed is specific to the difference in energy levels between the orbits in this particular element. The absorbed energy will appear as black lines in the so-called absorption spectrum. These lines are called absorption lines. You may have noticed that the position of these absorption lines are identical to the emission lines in the emission spectrum. This is because the two spectra, the emission spectrum and the absorption spectrum, are produced from the same element. The amount of energy absorbed during excitation to produce the absorption spectrum should be equal to the amount of energy released or emitted in the emission spectrum. We can either use the emission spectrum or the absorption spectrum to identify the elements as both types of spectrum will produce characteristic and unique emission and absorption lines. When I say unique, I'm referring to the position of these lines as well as the number of lines you will see in the spectrum. The three types of spectra can be produced in a variety of different ways. We'll look at a few examples. Continuous spectrum can be produced using an incandescent filament or a lamp. Emission spectrum can be produced by gas discharge tube and absorption spectra can be produced by sunlight and light from various other types of stars. In incandescent lamps or filaments in the lamps, electric current is passed through a tungsten wire that has a very high electrical resistance. Now by way of review, when a current passes through a conductor that has a very high resistance, the amount of electrical energy that is being transformed into heat and light in this case will be very high. And this is exactly how incandescent filament works. We use the current and the high resistance property of tungsten wire to convert the electrical energy into heat and light. The light that's been produced will form a continuous spectrum that predominantly consists of red light. In this type of spectrum, no spectroscopy occurs as there are no electrons from elements absorbing or emitting electromagnetic radiation. Gases in discharge tubes produce emission spectra. A discharge tube is an enclosed glass tube containing gases and a pair of electrodes that are connected to a high voltage supply. The high voltage supply or potential difference creates a strong electric field which causes the electrons to travel through the gas medium from one electrode to another. In other words, the high voltage makes it possible for the current to be conducted through a gaseous medium. In addition to high voltage, a discharge tube also has a low pressure setting which further promotes electron movement through the gas medium by reducing gas molecule movement. The electric current enabled by the high voltage and low pressure conditions provides energy for electronic excitation. That is, the current that passes through the gas medium will provide energy 
that's to be absorbed by the electrons in the gases so that they can move up to higher energy level. Afterwards, remember that these excited electrons will return to the ground states by emitting electromagnetic radiation, EMR, in the process. A gas discharge tube that can contain various types of gases. And some gases will emit EMR in the form of visible lights when their electrons return to the ground states. And this allows a very unique color to be visualized inside the tube. So you can see in this case, helium produces a purple color, neon produces an orange color. The difference in color corresponds to the exact frequency or wavelength of visible light that has been emitted when the electrons in the helium or the neon atoms return to a ground state. Now, if we take the visible light that's been produced by the gases in the tubes and we pass it through a glass prism to undergo dispersion, we can actually analyze the light into its specific wavelengths. For example, hydrogen gas produces a unique pink color in the discharge tube. This pink color consists of lights of wavelengths of 656 nanometers, 486 nanometers, 434 nanometers, and 410 nanometers. There are more wavelengths that are also emitted, but they are difficult to visualize. Each wavelength that's emitted corresponds to a particular amount of energy that's released when electrons return from the excited states to the ground states. This is how we use the gas discharge tube to produce an emission spectrum for a gas. This is the emission spectrum for hydrogen. As we mentioned many times before, each element has its own characteristic or unique emission spectrum due to the unique atomic structure and the energy levels of their orbits. Each element's emission spectrum will vary in the position of the emission lines, as well as the number of spectral lines that will be observed. As you can see, between hydrogen, helium, neon, argon, and mercury, they have different numbers of lines, and if you look at the exact position, that is the frequency of the wavelength of each emission line, they also differ. We can use this information to identify different elements. The spectrum of reflected sunlight is an example of an absorption spectrum. Sunlight consists of ultraviolet or UV and visible light, both of which are two types of electromagnetic radiation. When sunlight passes through the outer layers of the sun and Earth's atmosphere, Elements in these layers will absorb specific wavelengths of light. The sun's outer layer consists of predominantly hydrogen and helium. Both elements will absorb specific amounts of energy from sunlight, resulting in absorption lines in the spectrum. So you will see absorption lines caused by the electrons in hydrogen, as well as absorption lines caused by the electrons from helium atoms. Gases such as water and carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere can also absorb UV and visible light. These molecules in Earth's atmosphere will cause additional absorptions in the spectrum of sunlight. So this is the reason why reflected sunlight that we capture on the surface of Earth will produce an absorption spectrum. The absorption lines are caused by the elements found in the sun itself, as well as various types of molecules such as water and carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere. In this video, we've discussed the concept of spectroscopy and three types of electromagnetic spectra. Continuous spectrum is formed from any source of radiation, such as an incandescent lamp or filament. Emission spectrum of an element can be produced by using a discharge tube. In the case of gases, we call this a gas discharge tube. An absorption spectrum is seen when the element absorbs specific wavelengths of light, such as in the form of sunlight or any form of starlight. I talk more about the absorption spectrum of stars in its own video. It's very important to know that the emission spectrum and the absorption spectrum are both discontinuous and why they are so. The position of emission lines and absorption lines should always be identical if the two spectra are produced by the same elements. This concludes the video on spectroscopy.